Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. It's January 24th, 2023. A nice Tuesday down here in South Florida. As you can see, a little casual today. Uh, that is because we're doing a lot of travel. Just got back from Baltimore, the home office. We got a big show coming up for you today. We're going to talk about the markets and the Fed. You guys love when I talk about the Fed. We're going to talk about the Fed for a little bit. Inflation and then five stocks you need to put on your watch list today. All coming up right now on Making Money. Last year when most investors were watching their stocks plummet, one Wall Street legend had an unfair advantage that was identifying winning stocks with massive upside. Like Riot Blockchain, before it shot up 10,090%. Digital Turbine, before it shot up 789%. Overstock.com, before it shot up 1,050%. This power gauge comes from the legendary Mark Jacob. Right now, you can get a free in-depth look at how his power gauge system works. A way to type in any 4,000 different tickers and see exactly where the stock is most likely to go next and in any type of market. Simply go to PowerGagePreview.com for a free look. Again, that's PowerGagePreview.com. Again, this is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. It's the 24th of January, 2023. It is a Tuesday afternoon down here in South Florida. And as I mentioned, got a big show coming up for you. And uh, I know I always get grief and I wear hats on air, but I am overly due for a haircut. And I just got back off a plane, so I didn't have time to undo the hat. So I will say I have a little bit of braggadocious going on here. Philadelphia, you know, it says Philadelphia baseball. Uh, my Philadelphia Eagles are into the NFC championship for the seventh time this uh, since 2000, the second most behind the Patriots. So big game coming up on Sunday against the 49ers. So congrats to all the other Eagles fans out there uh, and ha 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 to all you Cowboys fans. Once again, the largest disappointment in sports. But let's talk about markets here. You know, we've had a hell of a start to the year and you know, we've been hearing a lot from the talking heads on television, the quote unquote experts that this is like one of the one of these bear market rallies. And maybe it is. However, we have broke through some areas uh, recently that are extremely important. So let's take a look at the S&P 500 here in the chart. As you can see, this is the SPY, the ETF that tracks the S&P 500, uh, about to close at its best level in a month. The other thing that's really important is it's above that blue line, and that's the 200-day moving average. It's above the red line, the 50-day moving average. And this white line coming down here, the downtrend uh, line, breaking all these. And really, if we could see this go above 410 on the SPYs, this is a major breakout. It's the end of the downtrend that began last January, one year ago. This downtrend would officially be over, folks. And just think about that. It'd officially be over. And I've been telling you for a while, by the time the market comes out and tells you that we're in a recession, it's too late. The market, the stock's already moved off the bottom. You don't buy then. And that's going to happen at some point, most likely. When they come out and tell you that we've hit a bottom, it's too late. We're well off the lows of October. We were down at 350. We're at 401 right now. It's about a 15% gain, 14, 13, 14, somewhere around there percent gain. That's a big move off the bottom. And I got to tell you, I, I don't think we go straight up from here, but I do believe that we are going to continue in this trend throughout this year. And it's, again, at one point, I think we're going to be up 20% uh, um, from the beginning of this year. I think there's, there, I'm highly, highly um, uh Really believe that's going to happen. I just, I just don't see. I don't see anything that's going to slow this down right now. I take that back. There's one thing that could slow this down, and that is your favorite topic, the Fed. The Federal Reserve could slow this down. Right now, all signs point to the February first meeting, the first of 2023, to have a 25 basis point rate hike. That's 0.25 percent. The odds also point to March. I think it's 13th or 14th. The next meeting, uh, 25 basis point, 0.25 percent increase. Then the next meeting, uh, everything's kind of pointing to uh, a pause, but that's going to change a lot depending on what they say February 1st and obviously middle of March. I think if they do their job correctly, they do 25 basis points in March, uh, or sorry, 25 in February, 25 in March, and stop. I think they can honestly get away with doing 25 in February and nothing in March because I believe that we're going to see the inflation numbers come in for January, which will come in in early February. The numbers for February, which will be early March, come down dramatically. And when I say dramatic, I mean, we are back at 9% in the middle of 2022. I think we're going to be down closer to 5% in the next couple of months. 
And I think by mid-year, we are down between 2 and 3%, which to me is more than uh, enough on, on the downside, and the Fed should be extremely happy about that. The fear is the Fed really Fs up, and they continue to raise rates because they continue to drive the car looking in the rearview mirror, and they raise rates too much, and it puts us into a mild recession. And I think it's going to be very, very mild, but more of a mild, moderate, let's call it, recession uh, versus just a nice little mild one. And, and that's that's the downside risk. So at this point, folks, I, I think you, you really have to watch the Fed, and that's going to drive this market. But if I'm wrong and the Fed actually does what they're supposed to do, this market's set to take off. And there's a lot of stocks that are up big. I mean, I look at the numbers of our stocks and our two newsletters, um, both up huge year to date. Granted, we had a rough last year, a lot of innovation growth stocks, but they have taken off. And what you have to remember, folks, when this market turns around like this, growth innovation is going to lead because you've already seen it in the first three weeks of, the, of this year. When a market turns around, that risk on trade comes back. Boom. Another asset class I haven't talked about as much lately, and it doesn't mean I, I, I don't like it any less, um, folks, that is uh, Bitcoin. And, you know, Bitcoin has had one heck of a run uh, over the last uh, little while here, sitting just below 23,000. We were down to 17,000 just a few weeks ago. 6,000 the low. That's 30 percent. We are seeing money come back into this. And I got to tell you, I, I think we've probably seen the bottom in Bitcoin last year. And we have the halvening coming up next year and usually typically rallies six to nine months before that. I think we're sitting up for again. And if everything goes like I believe and inflation comes down, the Fed can actually do its job. Uh, risk on comes back. Um, stocks go back to more attractive valuations. When I mean attractive, I mean fall more attractive as far as owning. Um, Bitcoin should join with this rally the entire time. So I think we see some big upside when it comes to that. Now I mentioned... I did a bit of a scan this weekend uh, on the plane coming back here, and I took a look at a bunch of stocks that you probably never heard of. Maybe you heard of a couple of them. Smaller mid caps uh, that have a really good story, good valuation, and look pretty damn good right now. Uh, the first one we're going to take a look at, you probably never heard of it. Uh, the symbol is BCOR. It's called the Blue Cora. And take a look at this chart, folks. I mean, this is one of the better looking charts you're going to see out in the market. And if I zoom out, uh, you can see here, it's really kind of turned around since 2020 when a lot of the market was selling off down here. This has been going up uh, at the best level we've seen right now uh, since mid-2019 for Blue Cora. So let's talk a little bit more about Blue Cora here. It's about a $1.3 billion company. Um, they're actually, uh, they, they had some really shifting the business model uh, recently. Uh, in December, they sold uh, their one division called Tax Act, which obviously deals with tax and software. Uh, for $720 million. And it's actually going to be rebranded uh, from Blue Cora to uh, Avantax, A-V-A-N-T-A-X, this quarter. So it's going to change the name because Blue Cora doesn't really go on with, with what it does these days. But now it's going to be a pure play uh, software company that's uh, for wealth managers and financial planning businesses. Big, big demand for this, a lot of that stuff out there. What's nice is they're going to use about 400, 450 of that $720 million they got uh, for uh, buybacks uh, in the stock. That should really help the stock. Trades at a 4P of 8.8, four .8, price of sales of 1.2, $1.3 billion company. Great looking chart. It's tough to ignore something like that in a very niche business. And a lot of times niche businesses are risky, but also at the same time, if they work, when it's working, it's working, folks. So stock number two uh, is Array Technologies. This is a uh, clean energy play. It's about a $3.3 billion company. They make uh, ground mounting systems that are used in solar energy products. And so basically what it does, it, it moves the solar panels uh, throughout the day so it gets optimum attention from the sun and increases the overall energy production that is coming in through those panels. Great, great business model. And uh, as I mentioned, $3.3 billion. Let's take a look at the chart here on Array. Held up very well. I mean, think about, you know, starting last year and where we are you know, today, uh, it was actually up last year when the majority of the market was down, trading not far from a one-year high, around, uh, closing highs around 24. It's at 23.55 right now. So, you know, again, uh, outperforming, looking good, great niche business model here on this. And if I take a look at the fundamentals, making money, which is awesome. Uh, it's got a uh, forward PE ratio of 23. And it's got a forward price of sales of 1.7. Uh, really nice top line, bottom line growth. Uh, so again, these this is the type of company that it may seem risky because it's smaller. It may seem risky because 
it is in a niche business. Uh, you know, what if something changes where they then some other invention comes out where they don't need to use their technology to maximize it? That being said, solar power is continuing to grow. And as it does, you need you need to optimize that exposure to the sun at all times. And a company like this does that. Number three is a company you may have heard of. It's called Insulate, uh, symbols POD, P-O-D-D. Uh, it was founded back in 2000, uh, and it's for a continuous uh, insulin. Um, so glu- continuous glucose monitoring, uh, and they, uh, they have a little uh, small disposable insulin infusion device uh, that operates through a smartphone and controls uh, the dosage. And uh, that's, that's been huge. Uh, that was approved back in 2005. Uh, about 150,000 insulin-dependent diabetics are using it worldwide right now. Uh, about a $20.5 billion company. Uh, and if we take a look here at the chart, you can see, again, had a nice 2022, really nice 2023 holding on here so far. If I zoom out, you can see the stock, you know, going back to 2016, it was down around 30 bucks. Now it's at 294. So it's about a 10 bagger, give or take, uh, in the last six and a half years or so. So this is a company that's done real well. It's a company I've followed for quite some time. It's a company I like. And unfortunately, the amount of people with, uh, that are considered pre-diabetic in this country uh, is uh, insanely uh, sad. And uh, unfortunately, we have a very bad diet, which is why COVID was such a disaster, uh, because we just are unhealthy people. When I say we, I'm speaking a large portion of this country, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. Uh, but if I take a look here uh, at the company, uh, it's not the cheapest by any means. It's got a forward P ratio of like 170. So it's not, not that great. It's got a forward price to sales of 11. However, it's only a $20 billion company. I think this could be a buyout target at some point. Never buy just because of that. But I believe there is some upside potential uh, to pod here, especially because the amount of, of people getting uh, diabetes is just unfortunately extremely, extremely sad. Uh, and it's leading to uh, demand, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but fortunately, I guess you're a shareholder for their uh, products. Next one to take a look at is Napco Security Technologies, NSSC. That's a smaller company, $1.1 billion company. They manufacture security products, uh, everything from uh, control systems, uh, products that lock doors, uh, alarm systems, video surveillance, you name it, uh, digital keypads, which, you know, basically everything these days is digital keypads. So pretty nice business. Like I said, $1.1 billion. Uh, if you take a look, it's growing pretty nicely. Uh, last fiscal year, 143 million. Uh, next three years, looking for 241 uh, million. Uh, if you take a look at the bottom line, of this company made 55 and a half cents per share last year. This year, looking for 75, up to about buck 30 a couple of years from now. So big growth on the top side, big growth on the bottom side. P ratio 26, price to sales five and a half. And let's take a look here at the chart. Great looking chart. Niche business again. You can see here all niche businesses, even insulate is a niche business uh, because, you know, obviously it's going after just pure diabetes. Uh, so it's a niche business at the same time. Um, so those are four. And we'll give you one more here uh, to take home with you before we wrap up the show. And uh, this is a uh, symbol GL. And uh, that company is Globe Life. It's about $11.5 billion company. Not the most exciting, but it's an insurance holding company. It does a variety of life and supplemental health insurance. Uh, also, does annuities, that type of stuff. You know, a lot of people at Stansbury, uh, which I'm wearing the Stansbury hat today, uh, at Stansbury were, you know, we have our newsletters, uh, love the insurance business, going way back, uh, literally two decades. And I never got into it because it's not as exciting for me, but they're great businesses. As I mentioned, $11.5 billion company. Doesn't have huge growth, but they have consistent uh, money coming in. But what's what's pretty crazy is they had, last year they reported six eighty six per share. By twenty twenty four, looking for ten dollars and sixty three cents a share. Price of sale of two, uh, PE ratio of eleven point one. Um, really just nice looking, uh, you know. And uh, then we also have a dividend small about 0.7%. But look at a chart here, folks. Uh, Globe Life. You can see not far from a high. I zoom out, and uh, it's just you know go way out. Just boy, just a nice looking one. You know, it's got pullbacks along the way, but just a nice looking chart. Uh, acting real well. So I want to throw a little little screwball in there at you. All the other ones are kind of small niche, a little screwball in there at you. Um, but overall, folks, I got to tell you, this market's looking strong. I like the way it's acting. I like the breadth that we're seeing. That means uh, advancers versus decliners. It means uh, up volume versus down volume. Um, and again, it comes down to, will the Fed uh, be our friend or will the Fed, Fed be our enemy? You know, it depends how uh, they, they t- decide to drive the car. If they drive it looking ahead like they should, uh, they'll make the right decision. 25, maybe 50 more, done. If they look in the rearview mirror, probably 50, maybe 75. 
and really mess up the market, in my opinion. So we still have a lot of volatility ahead. We still have a lot of uh, uh, unknowns ahead. But again, I'm, I'm going to think optimistic and hope the Fed does their job. I'm sure most of you disagree with me, but I'm going to lean that way for right now. But folks, we're coming up on Thursday. We have a great show with Brett Eversall, one of my colleagues coming in. He's actually bullish as well. We're going to talk about some stocks, some areas that he likes, all that more coming up on Thursday's show. Once again, thanks for watching. This was Making Money, and I'm Matt McCall. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.